Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. 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 Well, again, happy Ascension Sunday. Actually, Ascension Day was last Thursday, a couple days ago. It's exactly 40 days after Easter Sunday. And traditionally, Ascension Day is the day we remember three things. One's the day that we celebrate Jesus ascending up into heaven, where he was seated at the right hand, where he is seated at the right hand of the Father, just like we say in the Creed of it. And the second thing we remember is the day we remember that Jesus gave us the Great Commission for evangelism. That's the day where he told us to go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them into the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey all that I have commanded you. The third thing we remember on this day was we remember that Jesus gave us the command to wait for the Holy Spirit, to wait on God, to wait on the Lord. And that's what we're going to look at today. We're going to look at how waiting on God is actually one of the most important and crucial parts of the Christian life. Let's look at our gospel reading here today. Luke 24, let's start with verse 49. Jesus tells the disciples in verse 49, I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power of my eye. So Jesus says, stay right where you are. Before you go out and, and do the Great Commission, before you do these great works in my name, stay where you are and wait on God until you have been clothed with power of my eye. And we see the same thing again in our first reading. Acts chapter 1, verse 4. Jesus says, do not leave Jerusalem. Don't do anything yet, he says. Just wait. Wait for the gift my Father has promised. Now, this waiting on God is probably one of the hardest parts of being a Christian, isn't it? I mean, we've hated that word, wait, ever since we were little kids. You know, are we there yet, Dad? No, not yet. you got to wait. Or, are we, is dinner ready yet, Mom? No, not yet. You've got to wait. Is now the time, God? I've been waiting here in this dark pit for some time now. I'm ready to move forward. No, not yet. You've got to wait. Oh, how we hate to wait. But Ascension Day reminds us that as much as we hate hearing that word wait, waiting is actually a very crucial part of the Christian life. Because with that command, wait, also comes a promise. Jesus says, I'm going to send you what my Father has promised, the Holy Spirit and you will be clothed with power on high. So with the command is a promise. But does waiting on God mean being passive? What does that even mean, to wait on God? Does it mean being passive and doing absolutely nothing? No, no, not at all. Being still and waiting on God is actually a very busy and very active spiritual exercise. And that's another reason why waiting is so crucial for the Christian life, because with it comes spiritual growth. Let's look at our first reading. Acts chapter 1, verse 10. We read, They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going. Now that's just doing nothing. Just looking up into the sky. Looking up, looking down at your watch, looking up at the sky, looking down at the watch. Is God doing anything yet? That's being passive. That's doing nothing. That is not waiting on God. Being still, being waiting. Waiting on God is actually something quite active. Look again at verse 10. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men, dressed in white, and those are angels, stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, why do you stand here looking up at the sky? In other words, stop doing nothing. Stop passively sitting around doing nothing, waiting for God to do something. It's time to get busy waiting on the Lord. There is work to do while we're waiting for God. And the story goes on in verse 12. Then the apostles returned to Jerusalem from the hill called the Mount of Olives, a Sabbath day walk from the city. When they arrived, they went to the upper room where they were staying. And those present were Peter, John, James, and Andrew, Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James, son of Alphaeus, and Simon the Zealot, and Judas, son of James. And they all joined together constantly in prayer, along with the women, and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. They got together and prayed constantly. And that's what the hard work of waiting on God really consists of. Being still, waiting on the Lord is essentially about developing a heart of prayer. It means learning to pray and pray constantly so you can start to have the mind of Christ for the situation that you're in right now. 
For the apostles, it meant gathering together in the upper room and praying with their brothers and sisters in Christ so they could discern what God's will was for them to do next. They didn't know what to do. I mean, they were scared. But you know, the religious leaders wanted them dead, right? Yet Jesus wanted them to go out there and be witnesses. They're going to kill us out there. But Jesus wants us to go out there and make disciples of all the nations, starting in Jerusalem, where they want to kill us, all the, even to the ends of the earth. How is that even supposed to work? Jesus says, be still, wait on the Lord, and see. Develop the mind of Christ, and he will show you. So we see that Ascension Day is a reminder to us of what God said to David in Psalm 46, verse 10. Be still, and know that I am God. That was God's message to David. Be still, and know that I am God. You're not God. I am God. In other words, waiting on God is a reminder that we are not God, and that because of this, a large part of our Christian life is going to involve learning to wait on the one who is God. So if you're finding yourself going through one of those dark nights of the soul, when God doesn't seem to be doing anything for you, and all you can do is wait, take heart and know that this is all part of your spiritual growth, so that you can be filled with the power from on high. You can develop the mind of Christ. So no, you're not going crazy. And no, you're, you're not really as lost as you feel. And no, all your hopes and dreams for a good future have not been trashed. Rather, when you find yourself being sent back to your Jerusalem, back to your upper room, Jesus is telling you to be still and wait on God. Know that now is the time to get busy. Now is the time to get busy with the hard work of prayer so you too can discern the mind of Christ is for your situation. And know that God is like a gardener. He's going to be using this time to trim some of those old branches out of your life and, and pulling out some of those weeds and moving those rocks in our heart that are keeping the Spirit from moving freely in our lives. And He's going to use this time to teach us patience and endurance and humility and tenacity in prayer. And the end result of all that is going to be you're going to have a much deeper relationship with God than you've ever had. And your heart is going to be just a little bit more like Jesus than it was before. And no other time in your life can do that for you. This kind of growth, this kind of deepening of your relationship with God can only take place during these times when we can do nothing else but be still and wait on God until you can clothe the power on high. So that's the first, the most important thing we can do when we're called to stay in our Jerusalem and wait. We get busy praying. We pray together with one another. We pray constantly with one another. We pray in expectation, trusting that God is going to use the situation, this time of our life, to do something amazing in our life. Now, the second thing we can do when we find ourselves having to wait on God is found in our gospel reading. Look at Luke 24, verse 50. When he, Jesus, had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hands and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. So while the disciples were told to be still and wait on God, they were actually keeping quite busy here. In Acts 1, we see they're busy praying in the upper room. In Luke 24, we see they are busy praising God in the temple. Waiting on God is actually a very active thing. And I'm going to remind you of a little secret that Satan doesn't want you to remember. The devil can't stand it when you praise God. He can't stand it. It drives him crazy. Because Satan's goal is to get you to curse God for your troubles. Or to get you to blame God for your hardships. Or to get you to grumble and complain or whine and accuse God of being so unkind and so unfair. And that's his goal, to get, you, to get us to do that. In short, he wants to get us to stop clinging to Jesus and just give up on him already. And he will give us every reason under the sun to do so. So when it feels like your world is collapsing all around you, and it seems like your prayers are just bouncing off the ceiling there, but instead of cursing God, you choose to bless him? Or instead of blaming God, you find a reason to thank him and praise him anyway? What do you think is going to happen? Satan is going to run from you as fast as he possibly can. At least for now. Because you've won the battle. He will run away because you've won the battle. You can't stand it when we praise God instead of grumble. Because now you're learning endurance. 
Now you're learning to cling to Jesus no matter what. Now you're learning tenacity in prayer. Now you're learning to trust God and praise Him no matter what happens in your life. Now you're learning to surrender to God and die to yourself so that not our will, but His will can be done in us. In other words, now you're learning to wait on God. Amen. 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 Lord Jesus, we thank you for giving us the gift of the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for giving us a great hope. And we thank you, Father, that um, you give us that command to wait for you. And with it comes a promise that you will give us the power from on high. You will grant us the Holy Spirit. You will give us the mind of Christ so we know what to do. Help us to have patience as we're waiting for you. Help us, teach us tenacity in our prayers. Teach us to praise you and not grumble and complain and whine about how you're not working fast enough for us. Teach us humility. Give us the mind of Christ, we pray, and deepen our relationship with you. Give us a heart more and more like Christ. Help us, Father, as we go through our dark nights. Let me pray these things in Jesus' name.